Hey everyone, welcome back to Fireside Horror. Today is another why video discussing why the back rooms is such a popular concept. On the screen right now is the infinite cornfield level in the back rooms. Uh, this is the last level of Escape the Back Rooms, and I thought it would be a perfect spot to reflect on the concept as a whole. Uh, so we did the same thing with Lethal Company and why it was so popular, and the back rooms is obviously a lot more popular than Lethal Company and has been around for a long time. So the back room started on 4chan's paranormal board in 2019 and what really helped it is that it's a short story. Uh, it takes all of what a minute, minute and a half to read it and short stories just by their nature are really open-ended. It can lead to a lot of discussion. So the reason there's such a popular field in general of writing is because people can make so many different variations of it and there's really infinite ideas where you can talk you know to friends other people who like it of oh you know this is what i think could happen next or how it could end and you know you see that a lot with this with um well all the stuff we're going to get into but one of the other things on there that i think really helped is the image so Pictures in particular with short stories can help everybody get kind of a similar mental image between readers, but especially scary images, they can just creep people out and stick in someone's mind. And a really good example of that is on the channel, we read a lot of scary stories, and a lot of them are old creepypasta sometimes, you know, it's always good to do a throwback. And if you're familiar with those, you know, you had like Smile Dog, Jeff the Killer, uh, stories that on their own really like were not that great, but the associated image with them was so creepy and just stuck with people so much that they wouldn't stop talking about it. And it propelled those, <laughs> you know, stories into fame. Because the back rooms, the original post, I mean, it's good, but it's not like some kind of revolutionary crazy text I guess but adding the picture to it and having it feel familiar is something that really propelled it into like the fame it's at today and I think a big part of that and this really made these pop off too is liminal spaces so every backrooms level is really a liminal space you know something that looks kind of familiar you know you feel like you've seen it before but it's empty and it gives you like a nostalgic creepy feeling and a lot of I mean basically every backrooms level now is somebody posts a picture of a liminal space they found and then people add you know entities or things inside of it ways to get between levels and make it something more than it is but it's really at the base of every single level about the picture and about the image and it's interesting because on the scary stories I post, uh, the thumbnail is always a big part of it because if we're reading a story and everyone's kind of making up the image in their mind as it goes along, uh, I put the gameplay in the background to help with that, but the thumbnail really gets like the first big mental image that you have in the back of your mind while you're hearing the story. Uh, it makes you anticipate what's in there, you kind of visualize it as the story's going, and it's a big part of bringing people together to have a similar idea about what a story is and what it looks like. And a big thing that happened for the backrooms on that point is Kane Pixels making the backrooms video, or I guess quote unquote short movie, and taking that picture and animating it while making it look real and adding life to it really propelled it into the mainstream. Uh, before that video, I'd say the backrooms was more of like a niche kind of horror concept to people who were familiar with that kind of thing. But once the video came out, I mean, uh, people that aren't interested in that stuff at all knew what it was when I talked to them. Uh, older people knew what it was that would have no idea where to even find the story. <laughs> um, and all the videos that came after it really kind of launched this into the forefront of people's 
you know, vision, I guess, of a popular horror concept. And on that note, making it a collective writing project with the wikis and the fact that there can be infinite levels and anyone can just take a liminal space picture and just make whatever they want out of it uh, basically keeps it going on forever because you have infinite content. Um, it's kind of the same thing with SCP. It's not one individual SCP or the idea in general that propelled it into fame like that. It's the fact that there's a collective of people who are producing damn near infinite content for it forever. So if someone's interested in it, they can, they know, I mean, they never run out of stuff to look at. <laughs> and it's the same thing with the backrooms. Um, even playing through this game, I thought I had a pretty good handle on most of the stuff the backrooms had to offer, I guess. But I didn't know half these levels. I had never heard of them. I had to look them up on the wiki. I did videos talking about them doing survival guides. And it was fun because I was like, I thought I kind of knew everything there was to know about the back rooms, and I'm just scratching the surface because, uh, again, people pump out content faster than they can read it. So, <laughs> and on that note, it's one thing to read and see something; it's another thing to feel like you're experiencing it, and that leads me on to the, not the final point, but one of the final points is dozens of video games of this have been released at this point, at least on Steam. And they all have slightly different twists, you know, they create different levels. Uh, I might be biased, but my favorite one is uh, Escape the Backroom, since it's the one I've been uploading on here. But it's such a different feeling reading it or hearing it versus running around inside of it. And uh, I got a Quest 3 the other week, you know, the VR headset. And I played the first level of this in VR, which, you know, I might upload that at some point, but it was so creepy just standing there and doing a 360 and just seeing the back rooms all around you. And obviously it was creepy getting chased by the creature and it jump scared the shit out of me, but just walking around that liminal space after hearing so much about it was uh, haunting, I guess. But yeah, so all of those things are currently what's making this such a big deal, in my opinion. But I don't think it's at its peak popularity yet. I think it's going to keep getting more popular as time goes on. So um, if you like this concept, you might not know this. It's more on the low key side right now, I think. But uh, Kane Pixels, the guy who made the YouTube series for it, is actually directing a movie. So, uh, ooh, this might be wrong, but I think Warner Brothers uh, offered him a deal, and they're making a full motion picture, uh, like an entire Backrooms movie that will be in theaters near you, most likely. And I think that, specifically, is going to really propel this into fame, because the internet only goes so far, but... I mean, uh, I mean, your grandparents probably are going and watching movies, you know. <laughs> and it's such a such a fun, interesting horror concept that's uh, so different than everything else we kind of see in the mainstream. That I think the movie will be good. And at first, I was worried when I heard there's a movie because movie executives don't have the best uh, track record of. <laughs> Well, making good movies in general, let alone about horror concepts. But I think Kane Pixel's YouTube series is pretty good, so I'm pretty confident that once this movie actually releases, we're going to see a big uptick in uh, just interest in, the, in this concept that's already popping right now. So, yeah, I think the back room specifically, like 95% chance is just going to get bigger as time goes on. But yeah, I've, I've loved uploading the series, I loved playing the game, I liked making all the field guides and survival guides for the levels, so if you watch this far, I appreciate you, and I think I'm going to do one of these why videos uh, maybe once a month on different concepts we talk about in the channel. 
but if that sounds interesting to you, please leave a like, subscribe below, leave a comment on what you'd like me to talk about next, and as always, have a good one.